Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this is a short follow-on video from my, my previous one of my previous Spectrum videos. Um, this particular 48K model, um, I know it's had a RAM fault. Um, as you switch the power on and off, I'll see if I can show you this. Uh, okay, power up again. Yeah, the type the amount of time that that black block stays there, you know, the, the, when it does its sort of self-test, indicates to me it's running in 16K mode. And I found that when you connect the Div IDE, you could load 16K games, you know, like I don't know, Hungry Horus and stuff like that, no problems. Um, 48k games would not load, you'd get crashes and lockups, you know, just weird things, it just wouldn't load at all, like 9 times out of 10 it would just reboot the system. Um, so yeah, we've got a problem with the upper 32k in this. Um, there's a guide um, I found online which is really useful, it saved me a lot of effort trying to work out which RAM chip it is, so I'm going to follow that, uh, which I'll get up on my iPhone in a minute. Um, type in some basic commands basically. Um, you can poke, what you, I think one of the things you do is you peek first of all, to, or you poke something somewhere, peek something to ascertain how much RAM it can see, and then you poke uh, various things to some of the upper addresses, so you're writing you know, a byte, if you like, to a certain location in RAM, uh, and then you read it back to see what you get, and depending on what you get back, if you get different, so you get different values, that helps you diagnose which uh, address is a problem, you know, which chip in particular to look at, so uh, I'll do that now. So here's the command I've just typed in, as you can see, 10 prints, peak 23732 plus peak 23733 times 256. Um, and it's important to know, actually, when you're doing this, um, and it's a long time since I've used a bloody spectrum, um, so it's, it took me a while to work it out. But like, as soon as you press the pr P print, it, it, so it, you, know, you get print straight away, that's no problem. But when you come to the peak, you can't just type peak in caps, it doesn't work You've, it, it, when the, in the basic list and it tries to find a variable called peak um, it's really weird the way they did that but um, you've got to basically press hold the cap shift uh, there and the symbol shift to put to get in an extended mode and then you get the uh, these green you know the green sort of uh, values here then become relevant as soon as you press out it then g gives you peak um, so that's what you've got to do, otherwise, because it, it took me a few minutes there just wondering why, even though, the, even though if you look at that basic list in there where it says 10 print peak, if you were to type peak, P-E-A-K, like that, manually, um, it looks exactly the same, but it doesn't run the same, which I find very unusual, I can't believe they would allow that, you would think that it would just interpret it just the same, but it doesn't. Um, which is interesting, um, but anyway, you can see the result is at the top of the screen there. Actually, and we'll just run that now. I'll just run that again. If I just do run, you will see we get three two seven six seven, which indicates it's seen at sixteen k. So, I'll go through the next part of this now and work out which chip it is. Right. So the next thing I've done there is we're poking. Um, you do a poke to the address, uh, one address above where you've just previously, um, you know, your value came back. So we had three two seven six seven. So I've poked to 32768, the value 85, um, and then print the uh, peak of that address, 32768, and we've got 85 back, so that shows that's working. So the next thing we do there is we're poking again, so you do a poke um, to 32768, uh, one address more than what came back in the first test, um, and we're poking 17, uh, did I say peak in my poke? We're poking 170 to it. Um, I think, let me just check that, uh, da, 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 da. yeah 170, and as you can see, uh, when you, and then you peek it back, you do a print peak, um, 32768, see what comes back, we've got 175, so we've got a difference there, um, it's very interesting, I wasn't expecting more bits, um, I don't understand how that's come back larger, I'd expect it to be smaller, but anyway, we'll just see, what, see what's next, hang on. Right, something I want to show you here. Um, this is the, um, I'll put a link to this as I say um, on the video, this is the guide. Um, now it, the values you get back, you, you're putting in 170 as you can see there, um, that's what you're doing, you're poking to the next address up from the one that the spectrum says is the maximum. So in my case 32767 was what came back which is your uh, 16k boundary is it I think. Um, so I've po pe uh, poked 170 to 32768, the next address up. Um, and I got back 175, which doesn't correspond with any value in this table here. Um, and there's a re reason for that, I got two faults, I'm that's what I'm suspecting. So what I did is I printed off 
um, I went to um, Calculate Windows and just convert here. It's just a quick, easy way of doing it. Um, converting from decimal, the decimal values of what we're putting in, which is that, and you can see it's a, a bit patterned here. It, the two approach of doing 85 and then 170 is, to, is toggling on the uh, even and odd bits. Um, so 170 is those those bits set there, which are the um, uh, odd bits, I think. Um, 175 is what I got back. And if you compare these, you can see we've got a difference. We're expecting a zero there at bit position six, and we got a one. Seven's okay, and eight, again, we got a one. So we've got two bits that are out of position. Um, and that corresponds with this here. If I look at the table again, he's got this table of the values you may get back and which chip it's affecting, because each one of those holds a single bit. So, uh, and that's why you've got this, you know, if you've got one bit fault, one chip faulty that holds a one, that's, you know, failing on one bit, one particular bit, it will be, it'll point to it very nicely using this table. But in my case, let's say I've not getting the same value, I've got these two bits. What you can then do is if you, if you look at the, how he's, what he's got the decimal values for here and how they convert to binary, you can work out um, which bits are affected by which value that would, you, you would normally get back for an individual failure. So in my case, I've got um, this extra bit. Let's start with this last one, bit eight, the, the most significant bit here. That's set and it shouldn't be. Well, if I look down the list here, the only one that's got that bit set is 171. So if, if that was the only chip that was faulty in mine, I would be getting 171 coming back. So straight away, I can then look at what would relate to 171 on here, and that is IC15. And I've just swapped that out, um, done the same test again, and as you can see, now I'm getting 174. And that means we've solved that particular one. So that particular chip, U15, was faulty. Uh, sorry, I'm off bloody camera again. That particular chip, um, which is U15 here, um, which relates to that bit pattern, you know, that bit being set when it shouldn't have been, that's 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 solved. So now we've got 174, which is the next one. And this is what I suspected when I first looked at this list here. I thought it was going to be the, f the first one and the third one, which correspond to 15 and 17. Um, I think, yeah, in this table. So the next chip I need to do is U17. Um, so I'll do the same thing, socket that up, put um, a spare from my spares board, um, which I'm, it's a spares board, it's the one I, I showed in the previous video, it's, you know, it's corroded to, 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 to hell really, it's absolutely knackered. But uh, in any case, yeah, so, so I'll socket up um, U17 um, and we'll give that a try. So I'm just removing the RAM um, from IC15 here. Um, I've just added a bit of flux to each of these solder points, and as you see, you just heat it until the pin wiggles, um, and then use your desolder pump. And you can see that's pretty clean. That it's pretty clean there. That's pretty free. So I've just got one or two more to do, and then that chip's off there. Right, so I've got the second chip off my donor's board here. This is the one with the corrosion. Um, it is doesn't look so bad underneath, but you can see down there it's majorly corroded. There's a chance I might be able to get this working again one day, but it needs so many components taken off here and the clean, you know, the PCB really examining underneath to work out where the fault is, because it's not the Z80, it's not the ULA. Could be a RAM fault on here. Um, I honestly don't know, but there's so much corrosion anyway. But there's no damage there. That's the point I'm trying to make. But on this one, um, the uh, the one I'm fixing, um, you'll see here. I've had to put a, a, a couple of fixed tracks just to join that one pin. Um, now the trace is not actually damaged. There's nothing wrong with the actual. You know, under here, here is fine. Um, but the pad, it's one of these where I'm trying to sh give you an example. If you look at that, that, that chip there. Can you see the pads don't go anywhere? There's just like a pad sat on its own, and it's, it was one of those. The second pin down um, on that uh, that chip. What pin is? What number is that? Uh, it's like pin 15, I think. Pin 15, yeah. So it's just a single pin. Um, not going anywhere, there's no trace on this side of the board and so that, just as a result of trying to desolder it really, the pad just looked, just came straight off with too much heat um, so that's unfortunate, it's a long time since I've damaged a trace like that um, where's it gone now? Okay, you'll see it on the damn camera, here we go um, but so after I heated it and soldered it, it still it made a good connection, I did continuity checks and I did have them between those the two chips either side but I thought, well, because you can't really see the solder there, it's just too much of a risk, you know, how much solder is there there, how long will it last, so that's why I've put those there, they don't really need to be there, but it's a precaution more than anything. Um, but these things will happen, trust me, you know, um, even when you're an expert, I've, I've watched one of Jules McCollum's videos recently, even he damaged a trace, 
um, getting one of these off at some point, I think, or doing something somewhere. I don't know. I remember just vaguely remember seeing it. But anyway, as you can see, we've got the donor ram on there now. So I'll just put this back in the case. We'll power it up and give it another try. Right. Well, I do believe that's fixed it. Uh, I'll show you why. If we connect the cycle of power. Just watch how long the black screen stays on. That's noticeably, you know, at least twice as long as previous. Um, so I'll just type the command in now. We'll just uh, we'll, we'll do a, a, a poke um, to that address and see what we get back. Right, so there's the command. What we're doing, as I say, is we're putting 170, we're poking 170 into 32768 address, um, and then we're peeking back the value. And hopefully, uh, have I got that around the wrong way? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, bear with me. I'm having a Muppet moment. Hang on a minute. This is, uh, I need to forget what the hell I'm doing. You've got to print, you've got to print peak. Oh, God. Print page three two seven six eight. I think three two. I've got that wrong. I've got the digits the wrong wrong there, haven't I? Three two seven six eight. Turn one seventy. So we put one seventy there. We got one seventy back. Um, that's really good. I'm going to try it with the divide E now and see what happens. So apologies for the angle, but you can only see what's going on here. Um, there we go, boot the divide E, so go to the menu. Now this was working, like I say, Horus worked, um, the, the Horus 1 I think it was, but Hungry Horus, uh, also the third Horus game, would not, um, and I think that's because it's 48k. So if we go down to Horus 3, I think it's Horus and the Spiders, um, Operation Wolf wouldn't load. In fact, most games wouldn't load, so what if we got Horus, so we got Horus 3, so it's interesting, it's only 18k, maybe it uses just a bit more than 16k. But this would not work previously, so let's see what happens. That's working. That's working fine. So let's just see if we can load Op Wolf. Um, probably use it to cycle power actually, it's quicker. So you've got to find the right one. Uh, oh, that one might be one. 7, 8, Z80. Yeah, previously that froze, it just wouldn't work at all. So that looks like that's working. See if we can start a game. I have got a joystick connected, so there we go. I ain't got a clue what the controls are on this. Looks like it's the cursor keys, is it, or something? Yeah. No oh, joy. Just one final thing to point out here um, that you might not be aware. Um, I was. I'd forgotten all about it, though. It's been a long time since I've worked on these. Um, but the upper banks, the upper bank of RAM here, the uh, 32K, um, there's different manufacturers, and that, hence why you get the different jumpers. There's usually some jumper positions, I think they're up here somewhere, I can't quite see them at the moment. But um, what you get is you get 32K chips, and uh, at the manufacturer, they were tested, and half, you know, at one, there's a fault usually in the upper bank or the lower bank of that 32K. So they stamp them according to which of the, which bank works out of the, that, that, that 32k chip um, and then of course uh, Sinclair you know could buy those in cheaper um, from the manufacturer and configure on the board here to, to, you know which whether they want to use the lower of these RAM chips or the upper half of these RAM chips um, now it's been working fine it, you know worked fine after I put those chips in it worked fine but it just suddenly I remembered this and I thought I better just check that actually just make sure you know check what I actually put in and what I've taken out um, now I've got the old faulty chips here and you can see this Okay, we've got macro mode on there. Now that's the chip that I removed. And do you see the part number on that? 4532-20NL3. So it's lower three. Um, now the chips that I put in there, um, I'll just try and do this if I can without touching the connections. Um, TMS 4532-15NL4. Um, Hopefully that four's clear. It looks a bit like an A to me, but it's a four. So, having spotted this, I went away, just after I put it back together, I went, went away and looked at um, the original chips, and noticed it's a 3, L L3, and I thought, oh my god, I've replaced, you know, um, chips in here that are using the lower block with ones that are using the upper block, so surely I'm going to get some issues. Um, now, I ran that command again, the, the very first one I showed you, um, where you uh, it shows you how much RAM you've got, and it comes back with 65535, which is correct. And I've run various tests and things on there. God, there's nothing wrong with it at all. So I thought, well, there must be something going on here. So I've taken it back to bits again. Um, and I'll see if I can show you up close here on the board. 
I don't know how well this is going to focus. Can you see that? That's an original one, still on the board there, and it's an L4. Yet I've just taken off this board a 3. So, you know, it, it hadn't been done by somebody else, it, it was shipped like that. Um, and it's this exactly the same. Um, You'll be able to see this hopefully at an angle. But if you look at the other one there that's not socketed in the middle, it's an L4. And obviously I've put on there an L4 from the other machine. Um, and they're all L4s. So those two that were originally on this board were um, both um, threes. The, the lower half instead of the upper half. Um, which I find amazing. So this must have been, this shipped presumably, well, uh, as a 16K Spectrum. But if you look at the back, it says 48K. So some unknown, someone unknowingly bought this from new and had two faulty chips on there right from day one. Um, it may have worked intermittently for a while, I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, I thought you'd find that interesting. So there we go, all reassembled. Um, this one just needs a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black paint down here, um, which I mentioned previously. Um, this is the one that came without any screws, and I've managed to find some screws. They're not the right colour, but they're exactly the right size. Um, so they're not over screwed or anything like that, they're exactly the right threads on them. So it's got special gold ones, this. Um, but anyway, that's the best I could do with it, really. Um, and it's had a new keyboard membrane, so at least it'll live to see another day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.